Police Scotland have confirmed that they've received complaints against J.K. Rowling under the SNP's new hate crime laws, but will not take action against the Harry Potter author. Rowling had dared the police to arrest her after taking to social media to ridicule ten high-profile trans figures and their claims to be women. The hugely controversial new laws mean that you could face up to seven years in jail for, quote, stirring up hatred about protected characteristics like age, disability, sexuality or transgender identity and other Scots are now joining Rowling's resistance. Last night's Comedy Unleashed show in Edinburgh introduced the hate monster as they use the power of laughter to hit back at Hamza Youssef and the SNP. So, before you laugh at a joke tonight, ask yourself the following questions. One, does the joke avoid offensive material? Two, is the comedian a representative of a marginalised group? Three, can you be absolutely sure the comedian has never said or done anything problematic? I'm delighted to welcome Andrew Doyle, who was behind that comedy event in Edinburgh last night. Andrew, great stuff. Look, what's the mood like on the ground in Scotland, and where did you get that costume? Uh, well, the costume was made for us by uh, a resident of Edinburgh, but I should point out it was based on a character invented by Police Scotland. They created the hate monster, put out a video, a very patronising video, in which uh, the hate monster... Uh, sort of wagged its big red fingers at the at the public in Scotland and said, you know, there's a hate monster inside all of us and you've got to be careful not to commit a hate crime. It's really infantilizing, really patronizing. So we just mocked it by uh, getting uh, one of our one of our people to dress up as the monster and to hector the audience in the middle of a comedy gig. That was the idea. Uh, and it went down very well. Yeah, well, what is the general feeling like about these ridiculous new hate laws that are coming in Scotland then? Well, I mean, certainly at last night's event at Comedy Unleashed in Edinburgh, there was a sense of relief that we're all gathering and we're all laughing at this stuff. We're just laughing at the way that the police have approached this, the way the SNP have approached it. Uh, various people from various of the protected characteristics that you must not uh, mock or offend. We're mocking each other. It was just a reminder that actually these are just jokes. We're just having a laugh. We're just exercising our uh, creative freedom and our freedom of speech. The mood I think is generally uh, one of disbelief that, that, mm. that Hamza Youssef and the SNB have pushed through uh, this crazy authoritarian draconian law, irrespective of all the criticisms that, that have come from senior members of the police, uh, members of the judiciary, uh, members of the public, uh, the, the QCs, various, various bodies have all said this is not workable because the police have said that they will investigate absolutely every complaint. And mm. although they've said they won't target comedians, they're going to end up investigating comedians if the complaints come in because that's what they've pledged to do. Well, that's it. So conceivably, and this is how ridiculous and unenforceable it is, if someone had reported you last night in the audience, the police would have had to have investigated you, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, whether they would have taken it any, any further will come down to the individual police officer. We, we had uh, Siobhan Brown from the SNP on the BBC the other day, and she was asked very clearly about this. You know, who makes the decision what to investigate and what not to investigate, how to take it forward? She said it's a matter of individual police judgment. Now, the problem with that, of course, is there are activists within the police force in Scotland. We've caught them at it before. Now, the fact that they're not going to pursue J.K. Rowling after she challenged them uh, is partly probably just cowardice because she's got mm. a lot of power and clout behind her. But if it, if it was a complaint about us, a bunch of yeah. comedians in a small room in Edinburgh, they might well have taken it further. Look, Andrew, can you just stay where you are for me, please, my good man, if that's all right? I'm just going to move this on slightly. So J.K. Rowling has been on the warpath the last few days, and GB News host Albie Amancona has been caught in her crosshairs this evening. So Albie said this on Twitter. He said, like most Brits, I'm sympathetic to J.K. Rowling's views on biological sex and the need for single-sex provisions, but I suspect, like me, most Brits would find calling a trans woman who looks like Munro Bergdorf him to be obtuse and mean-spirited. They're not a criminal offence. Well, the Harry Potter or they're fired back. So if trans-identified men are pretty enough, as judged by you, a man, women ought to agree that they're women. Femaleness has no relation whatsoever to how well an individual man or woman performs femininity to male standards. It's the very definition of misogyny. Well, and a surely wounded Albie Amancona joins both me and Andrew Doyle now. I mean, she has, she's sent you back to Hogwarts, hasn't she, Albie? Oh, if only I could have gone to Hogwarts, I would have been so excited. And I can tell you the little 11-year-old Albie inside me is so excited that J.K. Rowling knows who I am. I don't feel wounded at all, Patrick, because I still think it is obtuse and mean-spirited to call a trans woman who passes as a woman 
him deliberately. Now, I don't think that should be a crime. I think the 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 law in Scotland, which has which has come in, is absolutely appalling, and we should not be legislating against this sort of thing. But it is just not, in my opinion, the right thing to do to deliberately misgender someone. I, I, Andrew, have you got any views on that? I mean, I'm presuming your team rallying on this. Well, I mean, the point is, when it comes to the use of pronouns and the use of all language, it's about individual choice. I'm for freedom of speech, and I think people should be able to say absolutely whatever they want. I think it's important to understand what Rowling's perspective on this is. She's talking about the preservation of single-sex spaces, women's only spaces. Oh. And therefore, uh, a lot of feminists and a lot of women want to use and do use pronouns according to biological sex rather than gender identity. And therefore, it doesn't matter what someone looks like, what they resemble, uh, what, what, what characteristics they have, or how closely they align with gendered stereotypes. We're talking about biological reality, and, in the, and, and that's why she's Andrew, making the choice that I, she makes. I'm not talking, respectfully, Andrew, I'm not talking about single-sex spaces. I'm not talking about any of that. In fact, I make that very clear in the tweet. If you actually read it, and Patrick very kindly read it out to us, I actually say that I have sympathy with, and actually I would say that I agree with J.K. Rowling's position on biological sex and the need for single-sex spaces. But out of courtesy, I would call a trans woman who passes her or she, as opposed to calling them him deliberately. And I would say that if you were going to call a trans woman him deliberately, you're a trans man, her deliberately, I would say that was obtuse and mean-spirited. And, you know, well, in a, a free lot, society, a we can say whatever we like, can't well, we? Well, a lot of people do agree with that, Albie. A lot of people, even Jermaine Greer has said that she would use pronouns according to courtesy in certain cases. But I'm just trying to explain why mm. feminists like J.K. Rowling are saying that they're going to stick to biological sex when they use pronouns. That's their perspective. Also, by the way, when it comes to courtesy, some people are more deserving of courtesy than others. Of course, uh, Munro Bergdorf in particular has said some very terribly racist things in the past. I don't think that he really deserves all that much courtesy, if I'm honest. All right, look, both of you, thank you very, very much. Great stuff, that. And uh, Albie, you know, 11-year-old you can be very, very proud of yourself that J.K. Rowling now at least knows who you are. So there we go.